Hello dear students, this is grade 12 mathematics lesson on unit 4 application of derivative. On today's lesson, we focus on critical numbers and critical values. So after reviving this lesson, you are expected to apply derivatives in determining critical numbers and critical values. Not only that, you are expected to determine absolute maximum and minimum values of function on a given closed interval. So now let's continue to the lesson. Okay, let C be in the domain of F if F derivative of C uh, is equal to zero or F has no derivative at C, then C is said to be a critical number of f. A function is given to determine the critical number. What you do is simply you need to determine the point where the derivative of that function is zero or the point where the derivative of that function does not exist. So let's see example for this. Consider the following graph and determine the critical numbers. Look this one. If we have this graph and have this different point, let's assume this point is A and this point is B and this point C and this point D and E. From these points, which one will be the critical numbers for this function f of x? Assume this function is f of x. To find the critical number, we need simply to find the point where the derivative of this function is 0. Derivative means it is a slope of tangent line. So we need to find the point where the slope of tangent line uh, for this graph is 0. If we take tangent line at this point, it's a horizontal line. So the derivative at this point it is 0. So one of the critical number is it is b. So at this point, f derivative, f derivative of our function at b is 0 since the tangent line is horizontal. Not only at this point, you can see this point also, if you draw a tangent line at this point, you will have a horizontal tangent line. Therefore, the derivative of this function at this point is zero. So we have another critical number here also. This also is a critical number. So here, uh, f derivative of the function at c is it is zero. So c is also another critical number. If you see this point, it is a sharp point, so at this point, we can't draw a tangent line, a unique tangent line at this point. So the derivative of this function at this point does not exist. So this is also another critical point because uh, the critical number also is found at a point where the derivative of the function does not exist. Therefore, at this point, the derivative of our function at d does not exist, does not, does not exist. Therefore, we have three critical points here. One critical point is b, the other one is c, and the other one is d. Therefore, 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 x is equal to c, x is equal to b, and x is equal to d are, are critical numbers. These are critical, critical numbers. Okay, now let's proceed to another example. Take this one, find the critical number for this function f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 15x squared plus 24x plus 7. So 
uh, to find the critical number, what we do is simply we need to find the derivative of this function and then we seek the point where the derivative is zero or the derivative does not exist. And that number also must be in the domain of the function. Now let's see the solution. Solution. So let's find the derivative of this expression. The derivative of our function f of x, this is equal to, the derivative of this one is, it is 3 times 2, it is 6, 6x six squared. And the derivative of this one, 2 times minus 15 is this, minus 30x. And the derivative of this number is this, that is 24. And the derivative of 70, 0, 0, 4, this is a derivative. So the derivative of our function is 0 implies that this expression is 0. Therefore, here, 6x squared minus 30x plus 24 is equal to 0. And then divide this by 6, you get x squared minus this one is it is minus 5 minus 5x you divide 24 by 6 you get this 4 is equal to 0 so this implies factoring this you get this one is x minus 1 times x minus 4 this equal to 0 so the derivative of our function uh, will be 0 at x equals to 1 or at x equals to 4. So since the derivative of our function is 0 at these two points, these points are in the domain of our function, so the critical numbers are 1 and 4. Therefore, the critical numbers, the critical numbers are x is equal to 1 or x is equal to 4. This is it. Okay, the third example here it says find the critical numbers for f of x is equal to 1 minus x minus 1 the power of 2 over 3. So let's find the critical numbers. To find the critical numbers, simply we differentiate this expression. Solution. If derivative of x this is equal to the derivative of 1 is it is 0. The derivative of this expression since it is power function, this is equal to it is there is negative there. So minus 2 over 3 into x minus 1, the power of 2 over 3 minus 1 is this negative 1 over 3 negative 1 over 3. So this implies negative 2 over 3 times this can be written in this form 1 over x minus 1 the power of 1 over 3. So from this the derivative of this ex expression cannot be 0. So the derivative this one if you get 2 over 3x minus 1, the power of 1 over 3 is equal to 0. Cross multiplication, you get that to is equal to 0. So there is no number that makes this expression 0. But the derivative of this expression, it does not exist at x is equal to 1. If you put 1 here, this expression it doesn't exist. And 1 is in the domain of our function, therefore, therefore, 1 is the critical number for this. Here, since at x equals to 1, f derivative of x doesn't exist. And 1 is in the domain of our function, therefore, this x is equal to 1. 1 is, is the critical number. It is the critical number of this expression. Okay, now let's proceed to the next part.
Now, example four, he says, find the critical numbers for f of x is equal to 1 over 3 x cubed minus absolute value of 4x minus 1. Now, let's see the solution for this. Solution. So, here, f of x is equal to this expression can be written in other form since absolute value of x. Uh, we can define here absolute value of 4x minus 1 is itself. It is 4x minus 1 for x greater than or equal to 1 over 4. And absolute value of 4x minus 1 is it is negative of this 4x minus 1 for x less than 1 over 4. So using this concept, we can rewrite this in this form. f of x is equal to our function is this, a piecewise function it is 1 over 3 x cubed minus absolute value of 4x minus 1, it is itself for this interval, 4x minus this 4x minus 1 for x greater than or equal to this, for x greater than or equal to 1 over 4. And for the other interval, it will be this 1 over 3 x cubed minus for x less than 1 over 4, the absolute value of 4x minus 1 is this negative of 4x minus 1. So you put the negative of 4x minus 1 here, this becomes plus. This becomes plus this 4x minus 1 for x less than 1 over 4. Now, let's find the derivative of this expression. Let me simplify this first. It is f of x, our function f of x, this equal to this 1 over 3 x cubed minus 4x and multiply this to get plus 1 for x greater than or equal to 1 over 4 and this 1 is it is 1 over 3 x cubed 1 over 3 x cubed plus 4 for x minus 1 for x less than 1 over 4 so this is it now let's find the derivative of this the derivative of this the derivative of our function f of x this equal to it is this equal to the derivative of this one for x greater than part greater than 1 over 4 part will be it is you can differentiate this one 3 cancel 3 and x squared x squared uh, this it is minus 4 the derivative is x squared minus 4 for x greater than 1 over 4 we are not sure about 1 over 4 we have to check the right side and the left side so and let's find for x less than 1 over 4 too so the derivative for x less than 1 over 4 will be it is that is x squared plus x squared plus 4 for x less than 1 over 4 okay for x equal to 1 over 4 we need to check the right side and the left side derivative. The right side derivative or the derivative of this function from the right side of 1 over 4 is this one. And the derivative of our function f of x from the left of 1 over 4 is this one. These two are not equal at 1 over 4. Therefore, the derivative of this function does not exist at x equals to 1 over 4. So it does not exist at this point. The derivative does not exist at x equals to 1 over 4. So from this, we have one critical number, 1 over 4. Since the derivative of this function does not exist at x equals to 1 over 4. So we'll try to find also the other critical number. One critical number is this, x equals to this, 1 over 4. 1 over 4. To determine the other critical number, we need to check the derivative of this function, where the derivative of this function is 0. Look for this interval, for this interval, 
for x greater than 1 over 4 for x greater than for this interval the derivative is this one so is there a point where the derivative of this function will be zero on this interval let's check that x minus 4 is equal to 0 so from this you can see that x equal to this plus or minus 2 but from this negative 2 is not on this interval so cannot take this but 2 or is on this interval so the critical number which is found on this interval is it is only positive 2 therefore uh, then another critical number for this function is this x is equal to 2 so these are the critical numbers when you check the when you check this one the derivative of the, our function x squared plus 4 is equal to 0 on this interval this cannot be 0 so only the critical numbers for this function are x equals to 1 over 4 and x equals to 2 this is it okay the next concept is absolute maximum and minimum values now given a function f on the interval i then f of x has an absolute maximum or global maximum at x equals to c if f of c is greater than or equal to f of x or if it is f of x is less than or equal to f of c for every x in i then the function will has absolute maximum value at x equals to c now let's see another uh, definition here f of x has a relative or local maximum at x equals to c if f of x is less than or equal to for every x in some open interval around x equals to c this means that if you have such a function this is x equals to c for some open interval around c f of c will be this maximum so in that case we say f of x has a relative maximum point at x equals to c now let's continue to the other part f of x has an absolute minimum at x equals to c if f of x is greater or equal to f of c or f of c is less or equal to f of x for every x in the interval i for every x in the interval i okay another point f of x has a relative or local minimum at x is equal to c if f of x is greater or equal to f of c or f of c is less than or equal to f of x for every x in some open interval around for some open interval around x this means look this one at this point at c around at c this f of x is smaller around this point this value we call this point relative minimum point now let's see example for this concept Okay, here it says, consider the following graph and determine the extreme values on the interval A to A. Let's see the graph. okay let's take this graph this point is it is a b c 
see D and this one is E. So this uh, function is given. This is our function f of x. So considering this, uh, we are asked to determine absolute maximum and absolute minimum of this function. OK. If you see this point, open interval around b, this value is greater for every member of uh, this open interval. Therefore, this point is relative, relative, this relative max. This is a relative maximum point. Okay, when you see this point, when you see this point, for some open interval around C, the functional value at C is it is it is smaller than all members of this interval. Therefore, this point is this relative minimum. If you take this one. For some open interval around D, f of D is greater of all members of this open interval. Therefore, this point as it is, this point is relative maximum point. And this point is the smallest of all values from this function. Therefore, this point is absolute minimum point of the function. This it is absolute. This is absolute minimum. When you see this one, even though it is a relative maximum, in addition to that, it's also absolute maximum because it is a bigger than every member of this functional value. Therefore, this point is absolute maximum. OK, now let's continue to the next part. Now, let's see how to find absolute maximum and minimum values. Let f is a continuous function on a closed interval a, b, then f has absolute maximum and minimum values at critical point c on a, b, or at the end points, or it may have at the end points. If a function is continuous on a closed interval, to find its absolute maximum or minimum values, you need to find first the critical number on that interval, and then ch you check the functional value of that function at the critical number at, at the end point. So here, the greatest of this, the functional values at the end points or at the critical number, we call this the absolute maximum value on that interval. And the smallest of this functional values is this, the absolute minimum value of that function. Now let's see example for this concept. Here it says, find the absolute maximum and minimum value of this function f of x equal to x squared minus 1 over 3 x cubed on the interval negative 1 up to 1. Now, let's see the solution. So, to find the absolute max and the minimum of this function, we need critical number for this function, the critical number which is found on this interval. Therefore, here, the derivative of our function, f derivative of x, this is equal to the derivative of this one, this, 2x minus the derivative of this function is this x squared. x squared 3 cancel 3 and subtract 1 from the exponent, you have x squared. Therefore, this equal to factoring x, you have this 1, this 2 minus x. Here, this derivative of our function f of x is 0 implies this one x times 
2 minus x is 0. 2 minus x is it is 0. Therefore, x equals to 0 or x is equal to 2. These two are the point where the derivative of this function is 0. Therefore, the critical numbers are 0 and 2. But the critical number which is found on this interval is only x equals to 0. So we need to check the functional value of this function at negative 1, 1, and 0, and then we compare. So let's find the functional value at end point at negative 1, and the functional value at the other end point, and the functional value at the critical point which is found on this interval. Therefore, the functional value at negative 1, this is minus 1 squared minus 1 over 3 minus 1 cubed. So you have this one, minus 1 squared is positive 1 plus this one is negative times ne plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 3. So the result will be this 4 over 3, 4 over 3 is the functional value at x equal to negative 1 is at one, one of the end points is 4 over 3. At the other end, putting 1, 1 squared minus 1 over 3 times 1 cubed. This equal to 1 minus 1 over 1 minus 1 over 3. Therefore, this it is 2 over 3. This it is 2 over 3. At 0, its functional value at 0, will be it is 0. Simply, when you put 0 squared minus 0 times 1 over 3, it is 0. Therefore, from this, when you compare these three results, this is the maximum number. So, this it is the absolute max. It is absolute max. This absolute maximum value. And this one is the smallest. This is absolute minimum value. Now, let's continue to the other part. Okay, now, the next example, example 2, find the absolute maximum and minimum value of f of x is equal to 1 over x or the interval negative 1 up to 1. Okay, when we see this function, graphically, it looks like this. This is a graph of f of x is equal to 1 over x. And as you can see, this function, we have negative 1 here, here, and 1. This function is not continuous at x equal to 0. So our function f of x equal to 1 over x is not continuous on this interval. So to find the absolute max and absolute minimum values, the function must be continuous. Because of this, this function has no maximum and minimum value since it's not continuous. So, f of x does no maximum and minimum values. Okay. okay, now let's summarize the basic point that we have seen today. The first point is, let's see be in the domain of the function f, then if f derivative of c is 0 or it does not exist or f has no derivative at x is equal to c then c we call c the critical number of the function f and the other point here f of x has an absolute maximum at x equals to c on interval i if and only if f of x is less than or equal to f of c for every x in i or f of c is greater of f of x for every x on that interval and f of x has an absolute minimum at x equals to c on interval i if f of x is greater or equal to f of c or f of c is smaller from all values of the function f of x or that means for every x in that interval and let f is a continuous function on the closed interval a b then f has absolute minimum and maximum value at the critical points 
on AB or it may have at the end points. So students try this one and two exercise and then uh, in addition to that please read examples on your text form page 167 to 169 and, and do exercise 4.1 so I'll give you one minute to write this exercise So this is all about today's lesson. Until next class, goodbye.